So let's play this clip of Greg Abbott talking about uh, that awful tragedy where um, over 50 migrants at this point have died of overheating in a tractor trailer uh, near your uh, your district. Um, just an absolutely gruesome, awful, awful story. And naturally, Abbott has found a way to to blame President Biden uh, for this. Here, here's Greg Abbott discussing uh, the, the, the tragedy here. Now, going back, many of these deaths could be prevented if Biden simply fully funded the Border Patrol operation of the United States of America and implemented the policies that, that the Border Patrol needs in order to do their real job. And the real job is not the paper processing work that they've been assigned to do. The real job is both to secure the border as well as to do things like inspect the vehicle that was carrying those people who lost their lives. I mean, I, I, well, I'll save my commentary for later. Uh, uh, Greg, what's your response to that? I mean, Governor Abbott, upon finding out that people in our state have died, he didn't share his condolences. He didn't say that we need to pray for there's children that were sent to the hospital who survived. I mean, nobody listening to him, nobody in the state believes that he cares about the lives of immigrant families. And so then for him to take this kind of a tragedy and use it to uh, try to start setting up his run for president, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. And and I think that most Texans know that in their hearts. And so I think it's time for us to bring people together uh, with a heart to talk about saving people's lives. And that means taking care of immigrant lives. That means getting these assault rifles off the street that not far from where these migrants died is Uvalde, Texas, um, where clearly our policies and our policy choices um, are putting lives at risk. Um, you know, same thing with uh, abortion rights. Women and folks in the state's life will be at risk. Uh, the, the Texas statute on abortion that will be about to go into effect says that they're that uh, essentially you'd have to prove that somebody might be about to die for them to have access to basic, basic abortion care. The fact that they can say that they are for people's lives when we have people being found dead in trailers uh, and they're using it as a political stunt that we have children who were just buried in Uvalde, it is just wrong. And there's a real moment where we need to come together as a country and in the state and say, if we wanna protect people's lives, then very clearly we need a drastically different direction for our government. Lastly, um, you know, you, you mentioned this uh, a little bit earlier that you you, you were uh, on the Austin City Council. Um, part of what you dealt with in your tenure there was f affordable housing. And right now we're seeing rents skyrocket throughout the country um, it, in terms of the, I believe it was the median national rent it exceeded two thousand dollars for the first time in history and uh people are unable to to keep up right now um what would you do uh when you're more than likely and very hopefully uh, elected to office in the fall um would you uh, be in favor of ending the fair cloth amendment expanding section eight for more affordable housing so were able to tamp down some of these prices. I mean, what were some of what are some of the lessons you learned from Austin City Council that you could take to the national level um, to help your district and others in terms of housing? Man, we could have a whole other interview about this. I was chair of our housing committee uh, on the Austin City Council, and it's a core issue that we don't talk enough about, but most people are talking about at their kitchen table day in and day out. I believe part of the federal government's role is to come into places like the South and support working families when they're being discriminated against and hurt. Because many of the things we tried to do in Austin, tried to figure out how we could provide some measure of rent control, tried to pass policies so that landlords couldn't discriminate against folks showing up with Section 8 vouchers. It's a real issue that especially impacts people with disabilities, other folks that have vouchers. We saw the state government fight back against us. They blocked our attempt to put fees on huge developments that would pay for affordable housing. They blocked our anti-discrimination law and legalized discrimination. The federal government, from voting rights 
to workers' rights, to immigrant rights, to abortion care, to housing, has a responsibility to come in, kind of try to fix things in states like Texas, where you have a right-wing regime that is largely overstepped. So I think repealing the Fair Cloth Amendment, expanding public housing, incentivizing uh, and pushing for more housing productions in fast-growing fast cities, having some measure of rent control allowed by the federal government, each of those things are things we need to be looking at. And at its core, it's about a tackling income inequality, power for working class people, building tenants associations, building unions. And that's something that we can each be doing in our communities and that we should be calling on our members of Congress to be leaders on rather than just reacting to. Greg Kasar, uh, running in Texas's 35th district. Thank you so much for your time today, Greg. Really appreciate it. Great, talk, great to talk to you. It's good to be with you all. And I just think we need to both mourn um, these losses that we are feeling, but then also to turn that morning into organizing and look forward to being with you all every step of the way on that. A hundred percent. And uh, before I actually let you go, where can people find more about your campaign, contribute help, um, et cetera? We're on all of the social media pr- platforms, just at Greg Gassad, G-R-E-G-C-A-S-A-R. And there are so many great progressives uh, that are currently running that you should support and uh, other folks that will soon be joining me. We just saw Delia Ramirez win in Chicago, Summer Lee up in Pennsylvania, me and Jasmine Crockett here in Texas. And so we just need to keep that wave going. Thank you all so much.